I am David Yard, and today's topic, Breaking WordPress. For those of you who happen to be breaking bad fans, you could uh, kind of see that going on there. Uh, so a little bit about me. Uh, some people call me Batman. If you're curious about that, see me afterwards, and I'll definitely tell you more. Um, Co-founder of a branding firm in celebration with my lovely wife at the back. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at DSNY, that's where I tend to hang out the most. Um, sometimes on Google+, Plus, but mostly on Twitter. Easier, 140 characters, keep it short, simple, to the point. Alright, so today we're going to be going into what's happening on the web. It's huge, uh, over 1.8 billion active sites. Now, this doesn't include the sites that may have died or just kind of chilling out there a little bit. 43% um, of those hosted here in the lovely United States of America. 48% um, of those, of course, while we're here, hosted on WordPress. And then that really huge number at the bottom that I'm not even going to try to even pronounce. Um, so today's challenges with WordPress security, we have things like administration. Um, how are we putting in secure users? The credentials that we use, weak passwords, like one, two, three, four. Surprisingly, a lot of people still use those. Um, the end users, who I like to call wild cards, um, never predict what they're gonna do or how they're really gonna break your site or your platform. And of course, educating ourselves on ongoing security. So in today's problem, what we're going to be focusing on is primarily three areas where things just really go wrong for some reason. Um, themes, whether it be free or paid, where you have a lot of theme authors who will just kind of throw whatever they can into it. They may not always keep it up to date. They may not always even care about supporting it after they release it. Um, plugins, another huge area. Uh, a lot of theme authors and plugin authors tend to uh, just kind of do things the best way to get it to market. Um, of course, not really updating it and maintaining it as the time goes on. And then end users once more. So what happens when your site gets hacked? Things like your SEO rankings, completely wrecked, never recover from them in some instances. Uh, you lose your consumer's trust, which is very important. Um, you spend hours and hours of time trying to find out how they got into your site, how you can fix it, which equals a loss of sales and money, which, of course, at the end of the day is very important if we want to continue maintaining Thank you our for sites. This American so, the types of attacks that you usually have kind of get broken out into two parts. One, where you have people who find the opportunity, someone with a whole lot of time on their hands, Hopefully no one in this room has that much time to go around and do bodily harm to someone else's site. And of course, your targeted types of attacks, where they get a lot more out of sitting down and doing some serious damage. So, with WordPress, we have pretty much the top five ways in which they get infected nowadays. Your backdoor attacks, which tend to be kind of difficult to detect, might as well just start crying because it's usually via you know full shell access and it's very hard to recover from those in a lot of instances. Then you have your farmer attacks where you know you just end up start selling Viagra, Cialis, something of that nature. Um, embarrassing to you as a site owner, definitely, and very much a pain to really clean up in the end as well. And then also you have your injections, the things like download this pop-up or download this antivirus. Things like those, very easy. They're getting better at designing them, better at trapping people. Um, so definitely something to pay attention to whenever you're on the internet or even on your computer. Um, and things like defacements and malicious redirects. Um, defacements kind of fall into the same category as farmer attacks where you just suddenly wake up and realize you're now supporting someone overseas in their social cause or even locally, depending on how serious your side is. So, the most important thing when it comes to WordPress security is knowing your environment. Knowing who your hosting provider is, knowing what kind of security they use, 
what kind of steps they're going to take in the event that your site's hacked, and what will happen if your site's hacked. Will they shut it down? Will they alert you? Those things are very, very important to know. And oftentimes, a lot of people just kind of go with the cheapest hosting. This will get me through. This will get me by. Don't do that. It's the worst way of ever going about anything in life, really and truly. When it comes to hosting, definitely want to put in a good amount into that. Don't have to go off into the deep end, but just enough to make sure that you're really getting the value for what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So server management isn't your thing like it isn't mine. I like the design aspect of it. I enjoy being very creative and making sure that the end user can really administer their content. Use a managed solution. We have things like Flywheel, which is more newcomer to the market. Um, manage WP, which kind of helps you see what kind of you know things are going on within your site. You know, plugins that need to be updated, which is very important. Um, themes that may be a little bit out of date, uh, things of that nature. And of course, your usual like Media Temple and GoDaddy. Um, and then of course, those if you want to write down the web address as well, over there. And a copy of this will also be online available after our meeting here today as well. So everything's broken. What do I do? That guy decided to throw papers up in the air and kind of, you know, do the whole face pop routine. Don't do that. Um, it's really easy to kind of lose sight of what's really going to happen, how it's properly able to be fixed. Uh, so very simple steps that I usually take into mind is keep calm. You may notice, generally a very calm guy. He works out really, really well in the event that your site just gets hacked, blacklisted, things of that nature. Use security or something like that to scan your site. Find where the attacks have happened. Go about cleaning them. Um, there are also providers online that will help you go through piece by piece and find where malware or whatever other attack has happened into your site. Have it removed. Protect your site with things like um, VaultPress, which does kind of like scanning, and also backups, which is very important. If you're not backing up your site regularly, at least once a day, you may run into a situation where the hindsight is 2020. And then resubmit it back to Google, let them know you fixed the problem, malware is gone, and they can now you know check things out again and see how that really works out. So a few recommended resources things that I use on a very regular basis. Security checklist. It's very long, it's very in-depth, but it makes sure from point A, point Z, everything's connected. Um, admin as your login, don't do that. Do things like something a little bit easier or harder, you know, for you or someone else to really figure out. Um, one, two, three, or password one, two, three. Seems really good idea when you're first setting up your site. You may go back and want to change that later. Start from now, write it down in a book. Do not store it online. That way it's easier for you to really remember it. Writing tends to reinforce things as you go on. Um, Clef, which is something that I actually use on my personal sites. It's a two-factor verification. Um, it allows you to hold your phone up to the screen. It lines up the little barcodes. That way, you log in. Then you put in your PIN number. Now you're logged in. You not have to remember a password, which comes in really handy, especially if you're uh, out and about, want to show someone something really, really cool in the back end part of your website. Um, and don't really remember your password because, of course, if you started and set it up correctly before, you'll have a very hard to figure out password. Um, many of you know better WP Security. They've now changed their name to iTheme Security. Uh, look them up. They have a very in-depth plugin. For most sites, what they offer, you won't even need all of it. Um, a few things to keep in mind when you're using security plugins. Uh, don't go and hit all the settings. You may break something that comes in you know, very handy down the road, like Google Maps, for instance. It uses very long URLs. Sometimes those things could be an indication of a hack or a malware attempt on your site. 
Um, but in Google's case, it's just trying to deliver directions to somewhere in the app. Um, Vault Press gives you two things in one. It gives you your backups, which you should be doing regularly, um, and your security to make sure that things are performing as they should. Um, and then Manage WP, which, of course, lets you know if you have a ton of sites, they're not using WordPress multi-site, uh, you're able to really see every site that you're managing, what needs to be updated, and being able to update on a regular basis. Um, WordPress does offer automatic updates. Use at your own caution. Uh, it's really great in some instances. Sometimes it may break something before it really you know, takes effect. <coughs> Uh, but things like those, keep in mind on a day-to-day -day basis. Make sure your site is completely secure, and you'll be all right. One thing that I always like to go by is an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. You take the time to make sure your site is secure in the beginning. You save lots of valuable time and money from cleaning it up in the end. So. That kind of wraps up everything, primes you up for everyone else that's coming up later. Uh, again, thank you for having me here. I'm David Yard, and you can find me there. Um, and if you have any questions after the talk, feel free to find me, and we'll go into a little bit more in depth about that as well. Thank you. You have time to take a few now if you'd like. Oh, sure. Let's go for it. All right. Questions? Does Manage WP update its own plugin? Because I had an issue with that. I don't believe so. Um, more so on the side, I guess, security reasons. Just in case something gets slipped in there, it's easier for you to track it if you're manually doing it yourself. Um, it's something that definitely probably should happen on a more regular basis, but it kind of gives you, I guess, an add-on to kind of like going through and managing all the sites that you own. Um, it comes in really handy to me. We tend to manage a lot of client sites that we don't generally host. Um, so we're able to see you know, what's going on there, what plugins you know, may, they may have installed that kind of need updating, um, and things like that. Yeah. You said uh, you need to ask what security our host is using. Mm -hmm. What should we be looking for? Well, you want to look for generally what's the system or the industry best practices. Um, if the host just kind of says, yeah, you know, we have your site hosted there, yeah, we may occasionally scan it to see if there's something there. Um, very often use cases in shared hosting where tons of sites are piled together. Your site necessarily may not be infected right off the bat, um, but what will happen is someone else's site, they may not take the time to care to update it and keep things secure and that may infiltrate through to you. So you want to know things that protect you in the instance that someone else's site gets hacked and how that migrates to their servers. Yeah. Um, what do you think is the, a lot of times, what slows down one site? Uh, oftentimes it could be an incorrectly coded theme uh, where they'll add in as many plugins as possible to do things that could simply well be hard coded into the entire uh, thing as well. Um, be careful of things that use plugins to extend functionality that could easily well be done using WordPress core. Um, and of course, adding a ton of plugins. Uh, all these things, even if they're not used on the front end of the site, they're still querying each time your site is you know, accessed, and they can cause the site to be slowed down. Okay. Do you have a favorite WordPress managed host? Uh, we currently use Media Temple. I love them for their speed. Um, Flywheel is one that I really admire, admire rather, uh, the way in which their customers support, the way they interact with the community on a whole. Um, and those two, I've also used Bluehost, which has been very reliable in the past, used them for over four years, um, and I generally stick to those three. What about uh, WP Engine? Um, I've heard great things about them. Um, most people generally get scared away by the price point of it, uh, but I haven't heard anything bad on them, and I would definitely recommend checking them out, too. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. So I've got four sites. They're kind of hobby sites. Mm -hmm. So I don't to worry too much about money. However, they have been up and running now about four years. I've never been hacked. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I use three different security plugins, which is concerning me because I don't know if I'm doing it right. But I'm using WordFence, okay. I'm using iThemes, WP security, and Bulletproof security. And I pick and choose some of the settings. They all offer um, brute force login blocks. But I only choose one of them to do that. There's another setting on Bulletproof, which I, I really like, where you can go in and edit very easily the uh, access files. Then there's WP Security, where they have some neat features, all of which are kind of overlapping these different <coughs> plugins. But I pick and choose. Am I doing it wrong? Yes. <laughs> Generally, you want to pick one plugin, because what will happen is, in each one of these, you may be creating bigger loopholes in the end. Um, one plugin, there's not really a fix all for everything, but it offers you a substantial amount of protection. Um, I do know with uh, iTheme security, they recently updated to be very, very comprehensive, um, and they're constantly updating it to make sure that it's very secure for you. Um, so the best course of action usually is to stick with one plugin. Um, it avoids that whole overlap issue where in one plugin, it may take care of one particular need, another one does the same thing, but then now you have 10 other problems that open up. So what do you think of Bulletproof and WordFence? I think they're really, really great plugins. Um, it depends on really the use case of what you're using the plugins to really do in the end. Um, if it's more for like a hobbyist site, uh, you genuinely would stick with one of those three, and that would provide you, you know, a substantial amount of protection which you're needing to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And do you have a preference of those three? Um, I tend to stick with iThemes, um, depending on the use case. Vault price kind of gives me you know, that backup thing as well, which comes in very handy. Except um, I have another plugin that does that. Right, right. Um, you can definitely consolidate them down. The less amount of plugins you have on a site, the less likely your site will be to hack, and the faster your site will perform in the end as well. Having a few plugins is nice, but I mean, if I have one security plugin, wouldn't using all three of them be better? Well, it's kind of like buying three different flavors of cake. I mean, it sounds really, really good in the beginning, but then you'll have that terrible belly ache in the end. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Awesome. Thank you so much. And up next, Adam. Well, um, <laughs> oh, I have a little bit of time um, while you're setting up for. <laughs> if you guys have not been to one of these before, which I know most of you have, between the different speakers, just spend some time. Chatting, meeting new people, hanging out, getting lots of free stickers.